Now in this video, we will quickly uh, discuss the Keynesian point of view on short-run aggregate supply and aggregate demand and classical point of view on the same topic. Um, uh, there is a slight difference in the way they uh, sort of describe the uh, interaction between inflation and output uh, given the shape of the uh, aggregate supply curve. So the, bear in mind this is all short-run analysis. Now the point of interest or main uh, topic uh, on the, in, this to in this video is the aggregate supply curve and its shape. Uh, however, we are not actually looking at how this is, um, uh, how the aggregate supply curve shape changes or is determined, but instead we are looking at this, answering this question, how will changes in AD affect inflation and output? It looks like to answer this question, we should really look at the shape of the aggregate supply curve or the SRAS is basically short run aggregate supply curve. Now, uh, the first view is the moderate position or the view by the uh, classical economists. The classical economists uh, originated uh, with the Adam Smith uh, teachings or the views on economics and uh, markets. So he was the first classical economist and we had recently Keynesians and the neoclassical economists and so on and so forth. Now, according to the first view, the, let's start with an example here basically, that's probably the easiest. Notice that there is this aggregate supply curve shape, sort of instead of being a bit more elastic, it's, it becomes this curve from this point onwards is more more elastic, uh, inelastic I should say, while it's elastic somewhere here, below the equilibrium point. It's made for, you know, it's, 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 it's drawn in for a purpose. Let's, let's have a look at that. So start with an equilibrium point, uh, Y1. This is national income or real GDP, it's point A by the way. And then you have the y-axis here uh, showing the price level. So this is aggregate price. Basically, if you are able to give a price for all goods and services produced in an economy, that's what it is here. Yeah, It's just an index in this analysis. So P1 and Y1 is the equilibrium level. Now, let's assume that the economic output basically accelerated or increased. There is some change in the components of aggregate demand. If you remember, they were uh, investments, consumption, um, government spending, and expenditure on exp or experts. Now, notice this: with a, for a slight change in price for, from P1 to P2, we have a large increase in Y. So, a movement from AD1 to AD2 is inducing a greater output and a bit of inflation in the economy. Now, let's start from a slightly higher position here at this point, point C here where our equilibrium output now so that they did they did move to 83 here and then that that was a rise in the price p4 and y4 being the equilibrium output now what happens if we move from now let's say furthermore occurred from c to this point and that's the ad4 now now at this point let's look at the chance between c and d what happened is that you see the the price change here is larger than the uh, the output change, so output change distance between Y5 and Y4 is smaller now than compared to this one here. You see, Y2 Y minus Y1 is basically wider than this this point here. So at the lower price levels, you have this greater increase for a small slight increase in price in output, while at the high levels of output levels, uh, the price increases at a uh, much higher than the uh, relative to the increase in the output. So the, in this in this sort of section of the aggregate supply curve, the elasticity is is, is low, or in other words, aggregate supply is in relatively inelastic. For a higher price, we are not actually producing as much as we used to produce before. When we just increased the price, we had a great output boost. This is because in the lower uh, output levels, uh, when we are in lower level of output, we still have spare capacity. Yeah, we can we can add more for higher prices. So firms for slight increase in price respond highly with more output so that they can they can meet demand however as they produce more economies aggregate sort of aggregate supply potential or the output potential declines so spare capacity is basically eroded or eaten up or used up I should say so towards the uh, towards the high levels of output as we increase output levels the responsiveness of basically uh, the out supply aggregate supply is is going to decline you see for a high price now the response is lower 
So this is because, again, I say this is also classical economist's view. In fact, this is what I'm repeating here, is that the, with the, as, the, as the output levels increase, price need to rise further up or much faster than the output itself at higher output levels because of the uh, because in the short run we reach quickly the potential level of output yeah due to maybe marginal costs for example increasing over time and uh, as we as we use up the spare capacity at the low levels we have if, uh, enough spare capacity we can increase output quicker than the related to the prices for example but as we approach uh, higher potential output levels here for example potential output can be any any value for example yeah so y5 could be something that's closer to potential output than y1 here yeah as we increase output essentially our infl uh, the prices rise as well but then ri rising prices will be higher as we clo come closer closer to the potential output now that's the sort of uh, um, view of uh, the uh, the uh, what you call this class economists yeah so uh, let's look at the uh, the position of Keynesians or Keynesian case uh, where we look at an extreme situation where the at lower level of output or the, in other words if you know we are facing this case of uh, recessionary period for example in the recessions output is lower the 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 aggregate supply curve is largely or mainly remains flat and sudden increase here. In fact, there is a bit of bend here, but let's let's live with it anyway. It's it's fine. It, it there is a bend. In fact, you can you can actually create a bend if you want more 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 realistic case. But what Keynes was saying is this: in 1930s, uh, he was basically commissioned to to help with. Um, I think he was asked by the Congress or government in the U.S. to help with uh, lifting the economy out of the recession, basically. And he realized that by observing this uh, sort of recession evolve he realized oh this was a great depression in fact he realized that uh, during the recessionary period the output changes without the prices the costs changing yeah prices were sticky in other words wages were sticky yeah the economy would have a huge spare capacity during a uh, uh, recessionary period it can produce at a given level as much as it wants you know that's what he theory thought and as a result, there was, you know, he theorized or formalized this view and then said the economy doesn't, uh, the aggregate supply doesn't basically decline as the as the as the aggregate demand declines. He simply said, uh, uh, the, what changes is that sorry, the prices do not change as as the as the recession bites. You know, the recessionary period we we enter the recessionary period. Instead, the supply changes simply. Yeah, the the, the costs remain sticky basically. In other words, they do not change. In the, so we just produce at a given price as much as we want up to a level where we we have our full capacity. So this is a full capacity output here. So let's look at this case here. I think I didn't put the uh, I didn't have the um, uh, interactive slide here, but let's let me explain what I'm trying what the Keynes was saying. Basically, you see this in the recession. So if you assume this is a period of uh, recessionary sort of uh, or recessionary gap, they call it recessionary gap. Before you know the gap, recessionary gap is basically a difference between full output capacity or the point. Uh, Point of output where we used uh, we reach the out full capacity and then the point actual point here in output here. So the difference here is basically recessionary gap. So what he says is this: in recession, costs remain unlike the classical case where, as the output uh, the aggregate demand changes up and down or or grows or declines, the prices also change with it to an extent. You know, uh, depending on how elastic the supply curve is, but. What Keynes is saying is now in recession prices do not change; they are sticky. What what changes is that output basically as the aggregate demand increases. So in other words, as we uh, invest more and more, we can shift lift the economy out of recession without raising the prices. You know, and then next thing is that if you if you ra uh, increase aggregate demand further, you can have another demand curve here and another up to a full capacity point, and beyond that point output doesn't increase anymore further aggregate demand increases will lead to price rises so another aggregate demand here would imply the the responsive is basically zero 
in 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 output to any rise in the prices this is because we are in the full employment point here yeah full employment output basically you know imagine that a country has 100 basically factories once it keeps producing and producing and reaches all 100 uh, in the in all reach all 100 uh, uh, or makes use of all hundred uh, factories and for example yeah it cannot really produce any more at any price level yeah so as a result if the demand increases then obviously without any external sort of intervention or bringing in from uh, or inputs from outside what happens at aggregate demand basically what all it does is that it pushes up the prices so we enter the period of inflation or it's called inflationary gap now yeah so aggregate demand keeps going up continuously and then we only experience uh, the uh, the the, uh, the the price rises afterwards and then rise in output just stalls doesn't go any further given that we have used reached the maximum potential yeah and so as you can see uh, up to a certain level aggregate demand or growth in demand or expenditure basically uh, doesn't affect the prices but beyond certain point and when once we reach the full full employment or full employment capacity aggregate demand, change in aggregate demand is only changes the prices rather than the output and this was Keynes, uh, Keynes uh, Keynesian position or Keen at the time this John Maynard Keynes position basically so what he said is this and I'm going to reiterate uh, what he said is that during a session without affecting prices if we stimulate the economy through aggregate demand in other words what you call aggregate demand is is the is the sum of uh, investment consumption government expenditure and exp uh, experts if we stimulate aggregate demand through for example injecting more money into the economy through government spending like projects undertaking projects like high-speed rail building bridges and things like we can we can employ people basically at this given price level and then shift the output further because as you employ more output increases it will go up or at some point we ju actually employ every single person in the economy and then beyond that point we don't we cannot increase the production in the short run all we see it will be then increase in the prices yeah that's what his view was well classical was that the, as we move uh, at any point along the demand curve the uh, supply curve as we shift the aggregate demand or as we stimulate the economy we see uh, price rises at the same time output rises yeah output increases okay so this is the sum of what or summary of what these two opposing views well in fact they are not necessarily opposing but they are s simply uh, sort of two different views see you in the next video now